Hey guys, it's another episode of Glitch Free Gaming, it's episode number... Hang on, no it's not. You're actually watching this, hooray! As you can see, I have eventually got my finger at my bottom and done something that we've always spoke about doing on the podcast, which is looking at board games and doing some board game reviews. So hooray! So this is a test and uh, today we're going to be looking at a game called The Magic Labyrinth. Here it is. And it's a game by a gentleman called Duck Bauman and it's published by Dre Magier Spiel. And I'm going to get slaughtered when I go to Germany eventually later this year because I've just slaughtered that name. And it is a... I seen this game online and did some research into it and it is a really cool little game. It's a casual game, kind of little bit aimed at children and things but once you see this game and uh, once we get a little look at it uh, I think you'll agree that it's it's quite fun. So the object of this game or the story of the game is that we are little wizards as you can see on the box and we have been stuck and transported to this magical labyrinth. Um, there are invisible walls impeding our way and we are trying to collect certain objects and once we collect enough of them we will be transported home and that's it and everything will be all rosy. So let's have a look at the game itself. So, um, it's quite a special box, and you'll see why in a sec. So this is the game board, and as you can see we've got a nice little labyrinth, and there's all these little symbols inside, and we will all be wizards, these are the little wizards, and we have four different colours for the wizards, and there's the red one, uh, okay. And we will start out in a corner of the board, and we will roll the dice because we are trying to get these symbols. Now, how do we know which symbol we're trying to get to? Well, this is where the magic bag comes in. So we would draw, or somebody would draw from the magic bag a symbol. In this case, it's the, what is that, a ring? Yeah, yeah, we'll call it a ring, some sort of ring, which is over here. So this is where we are trying to get to. So we would place this within plain sight of everyone else. So let's place it here. You can see that there. Yeah. And we would take turns. On our turn we would roll the dice and we would move that number on the dice. So you can move vertically, you can move horizontally. You, the only thing you can't do is diagonally and the clues kind of given away by these little posts as well. So, but you heard me say something about magic walls, didn't you? So let's have a look. So if we take this off here, and we'll just do this, and you can see underneath is the labyrinth. So here are the walls of the labyrinth. Um, the game instructs you how to build a labyrinth. There is two variants within the book, and if you go to sites like Board Game Geek and have a look online, there is other suggestions of harder setups for a maze to create. Okay, so we can see it all nice and neat there and uh, we would place this here and then we would proceed to mix the board up and we would do that just by simply twisting things around and we could put it there and oh there's a little cat so we'll keep the cat towards us and that keeps us in the, the good books of the girlfriend or oh, the cat and we'll leave that there. So you, you might have heard rattling when I was turning this board as well, and you'll notice that there's four metal balls, one in each corner of the game. There's one there, and there's one on each side as well. Now these come into play with your little character, the wizard. So as you can see, they are magnetic, which is pretty cool. And this is how we're going to be able to move around the maze by taking the ball and getting the magnet to clamp onto it and we will move about the maze so if we go if we decide to move forward and there was a wall there which there was you heard the clunk and the ball would come off so but otherwise it stuck firmly in place so that is essentially how the game plays so if Let's just do a little bit of a run through so you can get an idea of the tension and everything that happens when you're playing the game. Um, obviously I'm going to be playing all four parts so 
it's a uh, it is a bit of a memory game so it might be a little bit more difficult but we'll see how it goes and we'll have a look let's just run we'll go sort of this direction clockwise we'll start with green so if we roll and we get a two and where are we heading we're heading towards that little ring so let's go oh no no good so we start back and you will notice the way that i moved there was it was a decisive move straight towards that square you could cheat um and I think it would just break the game and it's not really cool. So I wouldn't, you know, I, I would I would strongly advise against it when you're playing the game. So if we have a look and I'll try and get the camera in quite close on the microphone so you can hear what happens if you slowly move rather than just the straight quick move. You can actually hear that the wall's there. Um, so, yeah, um, when you're explaining the rules to people, I would say that it has to be a concise decisive move in one direction or not so as we're doing a bit of a run through let's do it we'll, we'll cheat a little bit so we say we didn't really do that move um so we've still got two here so let's move one and are we going to go straight are we going to turn let's go straight oh no yeah see that's what we get for cheating so we'll just put that back there so when you hit an invisible wall you start from the beginning but you now have a little bit of knowledge so if with green for example we know that there's a wall here and that there's a wall there so if our, we know our first two moves out of our our maze out the labyrinth is here and here whether we go here or here we don't know yet and we'll only find that when we we continue so we'll move on to blue quickly so blue gets one uh it's going to go there yep yeah, that's quite safe Let's go for red. Red, he rolls at two, so I'm going to go two there, I think, uh, or even there. So one, no, I'm not going anywhere. So red, unfortunately, you did a bad call, so you're going to have to start again. We'll move the yellow one, so he moved that way, so I'm going to go one, two, oh no. <laughs> So you can see there's a little bit of tension and there's a little bit of stress about where you're going to move um, each turn. So, but you then it turns into a memory game as well. So let's try and see if we can remember what we were doing with green. Uh, we'll roll a bigger number so we can. Uh, there we go. We rolled a four. So we know that's safe. We know that's safe. We are trying to head here. Let's take a chance. Yeah, that's safe. Do we go this way and work our way around or do we go? Let's try it. Then we'll go for the glory, go for the points. Yeah, and we're safe. So we've landed on the spot where we need to be. So we claim this as our prize and we put it in our little bank. And the object of the game is to be the first person to get five of these. Whoever gets five wins the game. So that's pretty cool. Um, we will draw a another symbol out the bag to see where we're going and the symbol is the candle so the candles over there um, okay so we place that down now if for example we had drawn the figure which there's nobody else on a symbol but had somebody been on the dagger for example and <clears throat> excuse me and we had drawn the dagger the they would get that symbol automatically and we would just go on to the next one so that is it i think um it's a nice little simple game i really like it i do like the tension of moving about and trying to figure out where you are and you do get that little bit of tension when you're moving oh that's safe is it going to be safe if we go for the dagger let's go yeah dagger safe one more oh no <laughs> So there is that tension. I really like that um, in the right environment with the right crowd. This game is going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's a perfect little game for your openers or, you know, while you're at an infill, while you're waiting for people to arrive or if you've got two groups and you're waiting for them to finish so you guys can start a big game. This is a great little filler. Uh, the box, as you can see, says it's 20 to 30 minutes. Um, yeah, it's perfect. 
good little game. Um, great for all ages. I was surprised about when I first seen it and I thought, oh, yeah, it looks like a kid's game. Then read some of the mechanics and things. And uh, yeah, I, I really like it. Plus it's magnets and let's face it, magnets are really cool, aren't they? Um, yeah, you should be able to pick up this game for around about £25. I think the retail pr- the recommended retail price is £25.99. Uh, definitely worth that price. Um, although if you shop around online, if you're not, uh, if your local game store doesn't have it and you're going to shop online, you should be able to find it slightly cheaper. Um, I got this copy for £17.50, uh, a little bit of rooting around and luck with the Amazon and their, their £5 off scheme that they have at the moment till the end of June. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so there you have it. That's the Magic Labyrinth. I really like it. Um, what do you guys think? Is it something you, you think your group would play? Do you quite fancy it yourself? Or are you keeping an eye out? Is this something that you're going to buy and take to play with the, the family, with the kids at Christmas? Um, let us know in the comments. Um, and hopefully we'll be doing a lot more of these. Uh, so keep an eye on the site. Listen to the podcast. And we'll let you know what's happening. And thanks very much for watching this. Uh, so thanks. And we'll speak to you again. See you later. Bye.